Does professional bass fishing have a serious problem? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button. Become part of the team and family. And thank you. Since April, before that, it's been unbelievable. The amount of comments and the people who are new members and the interaction on the channel is just humbling and outstanding. So I really do appreciate it. But if you're not a subscriber, you should be because it's quick, easy, it's free. And all you got to do is click that button and become part of the team and family. So does professional bass fishing have a serious problem right now? Yes, that's the key to all this. First, there are a lot of people and fans that believe forward-facing sonar is the issue with what's going on in the industry. And while I agree they, and I dislike forward-facing sonar, I'm not sure that is the sole issue that's going wrong with professional bass fishing. A lot of these anglers have the opportunity to compete at the highest level a lot faster because of forward-facing sonar. But we have to remember that a majority of these, these anglers have learned how to fish the way we did. And we need to get over the whole scoping thing. Because quite honestly, if you were a professional angler and you decided to go fishing and you weren't using a lure with hooks versus the guy who has hooks, who do you think is going to win? It's one thing to label these anglers as scopers because there are a lot of scopers. But for anglers that are not using technology and the technology in forward-facing sonar are only hurting themselves. And they are given this opportunity to fish just like everyone else is. Just because you don't do it their way doesn't mean that the way they're doing it is wrong. And I dislike forward-facing sonar. I believe professional fishing has become a dream job for a lot of anglers. You grow up and you fish and you think it's gonna be an easy way to make a living. But these days, with overfishing that's happening nonstop, tournament anglers and locals learning the spots that the pros go to and then going there and fishing those same spots that the anglers, the pro anglers are. And we've always put a lot of emphasis on magazines and other stuff that we learned in the past but if you really, really, really looked into a lot of those magazines, they were never telling the truth. And we learned from those magazines where now we learn from social media and YouTubers. And in my opinion, the problem with the sport really comes down to pay to play. There are almost no non-endemic sponsorships right now. And getting a sponsorship in this wide group of amazing anglers is tough setting yourself apart compared to this angler to this angler and fighting for the same money in sponsorships in sponsorships dollars is really where anglers aren't making it or they are making it and sponsors are now realizing that their return on their investment the roi is not what it should be and can it be solved that's the real question. Can we solve the issue of sponsorships? Because the sponsorships is really where the angler makes their money. The angler is a marketing person for their sponsor. They need to work for it. They need to talk about it. They need to do all these things to earn that marketing dollar from that company. And while there's lots of anglers that work really hard to do the extra stuff, there are way too many anglers that don't, that don't have a social media presence, that don't go to that don't go to tournaments or don't go to expos or do any of that stuff. There was a time where anglers, when I learned how to saltwater fish, I would go to fishing expos or fishing seminars that would allow me to learn from a guide or a professional. And that's how I learned how to get myself or become a better angler. These days, most anglers could not survive on tournament winnings. I believe that probably 50 or 60% of the elite, top elite anglers, that's BPT, all the, the top levels, that those anglers don't make enough in tournament winnings to support themselves or their family. And those anglers need to work even harder at getting sponsors and get keeping those sponsorships. And like I said, there's so many anglers that are professional anglers that are competing for the same marketing money, the same marketing budget. And let's make it real cut and dry. It is cutthroat out there for sponsorships right now. 
someone that you think might be your friend or that competitor is going to say bad things about you to make themselves look better. The professional bass fisherman is in serious problem right now. They have a serious problem right now. The cost on goods and gas and lodgings and all of those things that it takes to become a professional and to go out and fish as a professional angler is only continuing to rise. It's not getting cheaper to go fishing. And a lot of people will say, a pro fisherman can't, if he isn't making it, he should quit. He should go out there and get a real job. Now that is, I can understand it, but to become a true professional, you need to be a full-time angler. You need to be able to go places and fish and pre-fish and learn and learn the strategy and how the pattern of the fish are happening. And if you have a side job or a full-time job, it's really tough to do that. And these days, sponsors not only want to see your name on the leaderboard, but they want to see your name on social media. And that's just another whole ball of wax that I have talked about several times. And I, again, will try not to throw anyone any shade at anybody, but I think there's a lot of anglers that hurt the top field of anglers because they are, they're great anglers, but they're not competitive. You have two or three or four or five bad years, you should really look into what you're doing. And I know that sounds really harsh, but if you're not competitive in that elite series or in that series that you're fishing, why are you fishing? And if you're fishing because your sponsorships are so much that you make $150,000, $180,000, yet you can't compete at any level, I really don't think those sponsors should be paying you anything. I don't care how big your social media presence is. If you're not competing at the highest level and you're taking away marketing money from another angler who's competitive, shame on those companies for not doing their due diligence or looking at who or what that angler does. Because if he's dead last, you're not getting, it doesn't matter what he does on social media because he isn't doing anything on the tournament series. And I'll just use this as an example. I have done graphics for 30 years. Worked for another company, a big company for a lot of years. And then moved on and did websites and so forth. And these days, everybody who has a computer thinks they're a graphic designer. And you might be, but I can tell you, there's a drastic difference in what I can do in Photoshop, in Illustrator, and InDesign, and all those things, than what you can do in Word. And that's not taking a shot at anyone, because there are some people that can do Word as well as I can do InDesign, or Photoshop, or Illustrator. But the majority of the people can't. And if you use that analogy as anglers, there's a lot of anglers who can catch a lot of fish and are professional anglers. But are they doing the, can they do the same thing as that top angler? Just because you can do it doesn't mean you're a pro. And that might just be a, a crazy analogy that I probably won't use anyway. But I don't know. I think bass fishing has a major issue right now. And I think the biggest issue is the pay to play. But what do you think? Comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're having a blessed day. Remember, take your kid fishing. Get your fish on. can't believe I'm doing this on Sunday, but thank you. Cheers and tight lines.